Chance. Come on in here. <laughs> Chance Collegian is uh, filming for us today. Welcome everybody back to uh, this is my class. I'm Don Lanning, and we're here for our uh, final day of the monster making class. I want to have you come on in and look at what we've been doing. I go ahead and get a shot here. Tell us your full name and give us an uh, email address, any kind of information about yourself. Cool. Well, my name is Michaela Jensen. Um, I have been doing this wonderful sculpture since day one. Um, I was really nervous about it at first, but you know what? I it's actually surprised myself. Um, yeah. My makeup portfolio is going to be on makeupbymk.com. And then my email is my first and last name, Michaela Jensen, underscore zero three at hotmail.com. Right on, great. Let's start with, uh, with show everybody your reference. Yeah, of Where course. did you start this, this week? So starting with references, I actually just started with the profile photo. Let me get to it. So you started this blocking one. with the profile. So I started blocking with profile. It actually helped me get a sense of measurement and how how beautiful this just like falls right back awesome and then once i got that done i started going into the actual sculptures like this one right here this was a great shot for informing you as as far as the horns as well oh, absolutely right? absolutely and it also cuz with the profile shot you can't you can tell how big and beautiful his cheeks are but this just really shows, especially from a quarter view, right. how smooth you can get that. Let me have you stand back this way a little bit. I still, still want to see more of your references, yeah. but let's let Chance go ahead. Chance just go back and forth on this. And uh, she definitely has not done the makeup approach here. She's done almost a, a, something that can be used for a, a display head. Uh, she can go polyfoam if she molds it. It could also be a mask for her. But back out a little bit and let's look at the whole thing. This is an awesome, <laughs> huge sculpture. I I've, worked, I've worked with Guillermo del Toro on a, more than a few occasions, and I love his work. And uh, I also love Doug Jones, who I've been able to work with on more than a few times. We were watching uh, clips from the movie during the week to get inspiration. And just watch a little bit of that, and it lights your imagination on fire. But uh, Doug Jones's performance was insane. Oh, it was. I watched the movie twice just to get inspiration, just yeah. to see how I could get the feel of it. Yeah. Well, provided a lot of inspiration, and she came on so strong. Got very soft forms in here, and uh, to have the harder forms. I know she's still working on the horns. When yeah. she takes the sculpture home, she's going to continue. Just because we're at our Friday doesn't mean she has to be done. But uh, she got all of her work done for our photos today and for the end of our class. But she'll continue on with detailing these horns and uh, also working on the eyes. Probably softening the ears a little bit more. Definitely. But I love the forms that you achieved here. Also, the proudness here gives me a feeling of like a lion, oh, yeah. and uh, or or some kind of uh, well, fawn, doe, fawn. <laughs> something in this family of realization. But uh, very pleasing. Initially, we were talking about doing a more of an expression because Doug, when he's uh, moving his face, he has these wild teeth, long yeah. teeth, and uh, I think we kind of fell in love with the neutral we did, yeah. kind of expression because we're able to experience the soft forms. And, um, I love how she came in with the lines. We did a little bit of, of a rubber tip tool work uh, with Michaela. She came on. Uh, I don't think you've ever used this tool before. Never in my life. And <laughs> once using it, I fell in love immediately. Just well, Show me your favorite one. She went for more of a softer. One. Go ahead and talk. This one, the white rubber is definitely really soft. I did it up here in these wrinkles. I basically just took it angled it in and then worked my way so it would make that soft beveled edge and then just going over it with water just really made it perfect and really softened those lines at work my line work out and it was just it's just my probably my most favorite tool especially because you can use it in so many different ways I did it I dragged it across the eye and made it so nice it's almost got a shine to it and that's what I really love the cleanliness of it but you also got a, 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 how did you get the effect of hair on the chest so, or fur? So what I did was I took a afro pick and I kind of just went like this in a circle. Because looking at, 
fur, I notice that it goes a bunch of different ways when it meets to the chest. Right, right. So then you all go in one direction because that's where it meets, but then still going in different directions, I still get that small type of fur texture. Right, right. And that's what I really love about that. It's the first time I've ever done that trick too, and I love it. Absolutely fell in love with it. It's, it reminds me of like, you know how in dogs you have like a pleat of hair that runs from the ear down the right. side of the neck? Yeah. It's that kind of the same value. And uh, she's able to control it, even though it's just a really cheap afro comb, it gives her a, a nice... But it's very effective. Very effective. Because instead of just using a teeny tiny little wire, you can just go in right. and just get going at it, and it, it, I love it. Can you I demo love. for us how you use the, uh, the large uh, tool, silicone yes. tool? And how did you get the softness here? Uh, so go ahead and do a line for us, I I'll guess is what do, I'm saying. I'll do this one over here. Okay. So what I did was I just... Chance, you want to come fully around mm -hmm. and get on the other side? Chance is going to come around, take your time. So I just took the corner of this large tool and I put it in, and I use both hands for most control, and you just bend it, and just mm -hmm. drag it around, and then that, it makes it a little deeper, but it also gives you that nice sort of lifted feel right here. And then once I go one direction, I also will take it the other direction. Right, right. To finish it off. Beautiful. Then, Beautiful. usually just by habit, I'll just drag my finger over it to get any type of little, like, small balls of clay out. And then what I did was I took a black sponge, kind of just went over it like this. And as I'm doing that, I'm sculpting still with these small little fibers still sculpting in that bevel that's right that's right and then i take this brush just any type of powder brush get it wet and once i go over that it just finishes it so nicely and it's so satisfying notice she used a lot of water on that see and it it leaves a nice sheen that when it dries it it's really nice she's going to be back to square one it's going to be a smooth soft tank and then if she wants to come back on and bring in a sponge texture or a hand pick texture she has that option and you also use the rubber tip tool in here i did which she got great effect in there feels natural yes still have some areas i would do it again but that's it's definitely a great trick that you taught me i love it well thank you so much for being yeah, here it's been a wonderful you. week I've enjoyed myself. It's wonderful. Yeah. Non-stop work the yeah. whole time. Just <laughs> yeah. And uh, we got some single frame of her also building the horns and laying the clay on. Well, I got a bunch of single frame, but we'll post that in the next couple of days so that you guys can see more of her building process. And uh, really great work. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very thank much. You. Chance, we're going to come on over this way. Thanks, Chance. Sure. And we're going to meet. A returning artist of my friend, Janelle. Hey. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Take your time and give us all your totally. information where we can find you and get a hold okay. of you. Okay. Got a brand new website, Janelle Turley, J A N E L L T U R L E Y dot com. Um, and also Janelle R. Turley on Instagram. Um, and is there an under slash in that? Is, what is it? No, nope, just Janelle okay. R. Turley. Um, yeah, just back to working with this this lady right can I, here. Can I interrupt you? And I, I want you to talk, mm -hmm. not me, but uh, the interesting thing about this is Janelle came in and took a class about six months ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had uh, come in for the class and she was just getting ready to go on a job. And so it came up that she wasn't gonna be able to mold it and time was running out. So uh, I held on to the sculpture for her for, for about six months. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, at that time, I assured her because I had had an experience with one of my sculptures mm -hmm. that I kept alive for about a year. Uh, I had a good experience with it. It grew a little bit of like gross mold, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I was able to either scrape it off or I think I used a little tiny bit of bleach and water to reduce yeah. the, uh, the fungus. But I was able to complete the sculpture after mm -hmm. a year with the wet clay. For those of you out there that don't realize it, um, this class is in wed clay, which is a wonderful clay that we use in the shop system, uh, but it is meant to be destroyed in favor of a mold so that you can then uh, run a positive out of any kind of material like silicone, latex, mm -hmm. what have you. Yeah. But anyway, so this, this sculpture is actually uh, uh, six months and a week old. Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, awesome. Tell us about you coming back in and unbagging it yeah. and what you did to catch it back up, because it did experience some mm -hmm. damage. It did, yeah. Uh, <laughs> unbagged it smells a little bit like the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, um, <laughs> nice. but it like doesn't anymore. Smell. It doesn't anymore. It's all, that's all 
gone. But uh, so the first day, mostly, I spent um, there. There were some big cracks that had formed, not huge cracks, but like some, you know, decent little chunks. And uh, I took them out and filled them in with new clay, um, and just kind of reworked um, some of it. Some of this area right here was super dry and just crumbled off. Um, just this top part, so I rebuilt that. Um, but I like all of these little guys that's that's all still original um, what I had originally sculpted as and so I uh, after that first day wet wrapped it really well and uh, the next day opened it back up and it was like it was like I had just started it like all of the clay had kind of like equalized even the stuff that was so dry before, right. it's super workable now, which is really, really awesome. I want to be selfish. She's got some emotion on some of these eyelids. And since she's had eyes on the sculpture, no pun intended, uh, <laughs> some of these eyes have, have a, either a wicked look or a happy look. But take us to just a few, just yeah. a couple of your eyes that you like the most. No, definitely. Um, well, just all of, these, all of these guys are so different. I really like this one because we got all these big ones and then just this little stretchy guy stretching down to be like, hey, buddy. <laughs> um, it looks like a little sleepy eye. There's, yeah. Wake up. Um, this one's real freaked out. Like, what am I doing here? You see that? Oh, that's a that fright one? eye. Look at desperation. Like, so terrified to be on this little, <laughs> little creature. What is happening to me? Why am I locked in this eternal <laughs> boiling <me>. sculpture? <laughs> I love this guy. This looks like a periscope eye that has just come up and he's just checking things out like, it's all right, it's all right. And then it goes back down in to me. I do like this one too. This one looks a little angry, a little, little uh, uh, aggravated. Comments like says, uh, very reminiscent of Rob Bottin's work on the thing. Thanks. I, uh, that was actually some of my biggest inspiration was I wanted this sculpture to um, fit in the world of the thing without looking like anything anything from the actual it's film. It's definitely mm -hmm. original. So, it's yeah. very much your own thing. Totally. So play the eyes against the beauty mm -hmm. of the face. Mm -hmm. Go back to the other side of the face, Chance, when you can. Mm -hmm. And also, if you get a question on here, uh, you can ask her directly. If people are sure, questions. sure. I'll pay attention to the uh, yeah. comments. The beauty side playing against the surreal side, though, is what really also nails Yeah. Me. I'm really happy with where it, it, it is right now. People are saying uh, really good flow. Love all the eyes. <laughs> and I think you're gonna mold it. Yeah, okay. molding it on Monday. Wow, great. Yep. Awesome. Well, and of course, as I always mention, that's gonna give her the opportunity to run a couple of different copies, if not uh, three or four copies, and do different paint jobs. Mm -hmm. And on one paint job, she might be very conservative. On another version, uh, there might be a darker element that overtakes and these eyes and the whites of the eyes peek out. Uh, she has so many different options that are going to come mm -hmm. out by going ahead and taking this step to molding. Yeah. We don't do any molding here at the D3 studio, but uh, uh, some of our, our visiting artists have been sharing a reference uh, to a great mold maker and he's done some great work for us. Um, he's already molded some stuff for Susie, which we're going to come on to Susie in just a second. Uh, listen, uh, is there anything else that you'd like to tell anybody about this? No, I think that's that's about it. Great. Yeah. Well, when you do mold it, uh, please send us pictures and post. We'll do. Oh, totally. We're, and we're also going to be looking forward to to see what you do in the future sculpturally. Totally. Yeah. As, thank you so much. As, as much fun as I have in this class with people doing sculptures, really the exciting thing is they came in, they learned the tools. Uh, the exciting thing for me, at any rate, is what am I going to sculpt next? So we have, a, we have a question coming in. Sure, sure. Uh, what's the thought of molding this piece as it's so detailed? How many parts were the mold? That's a good question. We were just talking about this before we came on. Mm -hmm. um, she's actually been biasing and sculpting deep wrinkles mm -hmm. into pieces that we know are going to have to come off. Right. She's been putting those lines in and biasing those lines so that she doesn't have a lot of seaming work or repair work. Hopefully the idea is, is that her with the mold maker will get together and they'll remove the larger stocks and make individual molds of those pieces. Mm -hmm. uh, she'll run the overall piece and then she'll dress these pieces that were molded separately back on after she trims them and what have you. But by sculpting deep lines, say for example into here, mm -hmm. um, I know that she has a that wonderful one. Yeah. one here. So we'll hide the seam within these lines mm -hmm. is the more specific answer. 
On this one, maybe down in here, there's a nice ravine. But she's going to go more over that with her mold maker. But we have given that some thought so that, once again, we don't end up doing it so much uh, time in trying to patch and, and do all that kind of stuff. Great question. Mm -hmm. Great question. Yeah. Anyways, thank you so much. Cool, yeah. We're going to move on. <laughs> thank you. Pleasure. That question Pleasure. was from John May. Thanks, Johnny. Thank you. Hey. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. This is devastating. Look at those eyes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I want you to take your time. And before we get into the sculpture, look here and give us all of your information where we can contact you and get a hold of you. Okay. Amazing artist right here. Thank you. Um, Susie Hale. My website is lastlooksbysusie.com. That's spelled S-U-Z-I. And my email is makeup at susiehale.com. At Last Looks by Susie is my Instagram. Say it again a little louder for me. At Lastlooksbysusie.com. At Lastlooksbysusie.com. That's my Instagram. Take your time and say it again. We can say it again. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, you're, you're okay. So you know what? We'll come back to that. Let's, <laughs> let's hang out with this amazing stuff. At Lastlooks by Susie. That's my Instagram. At Last Looks by Susie. We got it. We got it. <laughs> I'm going to turn just a little bit. Now, her key light is over in this direction, but I'm going to turn this because... This is just wonderful. You remember Susie from my last class, uh, two or three classes ago. She did the most devastating, beautiful werewolf. And I think on the first day of this class, she said, well, Susie, what are you gonna do? Uh, and she said, I wanna do something different, something really cool. Something and sweet. so she came on with this, and I want you to talk about the concept. Um, I wanted to do a, a Giger-inspired Jen character. And I get Jeannie off the pointed ears, and I get a lot of Giger in here. I don't even know what I'm referencing in my mind, but she brought all kinds of Giger reference in. Can you show them? This was one. And it ties right into, oh, the family of designer realization that Giger brought to us. And We're, she's uh, yeah. also brought in her own line work that's amazing. I gotta turn this around. We're gonna come back to the front in a second. We're getting some good comments. Beautiful, wow. Insane. Good stuff. Yeah, okay. Susie, take this down for us. Oh. I'm not finished back there, is it? No, <laughs> oh, do you not want to show this? Tell me. Oh, we can show it. I'm just not finished. She's oh, not I'll done. She's still going to continue on, but That's i got to show them like this. Here. This is the stuff up here that I really want to show. She's working on the back still, but look at the value she got here. This feels like, I don't want to say lobster, but it feels like... <laughs> uh, 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 how do I Bone say it? Shell. Vertebrae? Show vertebrae, what what have you. But also she's got mixed media in here to get different interest. But look at this pattern. Chance, come up there and just lose yourself. And that's her own prefix. We got Giger stuff going. We've got some kind of aquatic shells going. But she found her own interesting stuff to tie it together. And, yeah, 22 and bring, people watching. Yeah, bring something special. I'm going to bring it back around. Do you want to cut some details for us or do a little line work or explain any other part? Oh, talk about the eyes. Oh, the I'm going to eyes. back away. Go ahead. So I got these beautiful eyes from motion picture effects. Wow. I needed something that looked like fire and I thought this worked really well. Eyes of Fire, Robert, <laughs> Robert uh, J. Sexton says. What was the company? That's great. Oh, yeah. oh, introduce your fellow. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Okay. Robert. Okay. Not my part. Yeah. Okay. I got you. North Seal. Yeah, yeah, we've yeah. used uh, their eyes before. Thank you, fellows. This is a quality product. Yeah, Good price. eyes. Gorgeous. I love them. Cool. Great comments coming in. Absolutely talented. The form and profile is awesome on this piece. That's awesome. Also see how she flared the eyelid. If you just looked at the eyelid alone and nothing else, you see a great flow in there. You see a great treatment. As she was building this, uh, I went out for a break or whatever and came back in and she had these eyebrows in and it added kind of a regal um, all-knowingness, if you will. There was just something on fire with that. I responded really well to that. Once again, this drives me crazy. Notice how the forms, once again, are soft in here. Beautiful, naturalistic lips. Nothing's trying too hard. It just feels very natural. So that so much is communicated between the eyes and the design ethic as well. Uh, I love, too, that the flow of the eyebrows going in this direction 
and in the same direction comes the ear and it goes in the same direction and then this outline goes in the same direction uh, one of our folks looking in said mentioned flow flow is very important the follow-through lines are just beautiful mm -hmm. and it, it adds go ahead we have a comment from Jackson Rupert hi Don beautiful work from the students as always hey yeah, <laughs> wonderful guy Jackson he was in the last class Look up Jackson Rupert. He did a wonderful sculpture. A wonderful, wonderful uh, a crazy monkey. But uh, anyways, I'm, just, I'm so says, happy with this. It looks so powerful. The eyes really help that. And the crazy. whole gaze and the horns look amazing. Absolutely That's beautiful. Awesome. Thank you. Now, Susie molded her werewolf, and we took it to a Monster Palooza, and Elliot put it in the uh, museum and uh, gave us some lighting. And just wonderful. And uh, I know that Susie's uh, going to mold this. She still has a ways to go. Uh, interesting thing about these kind of classes, uh, we don't often talk about it, but the sculpture's done when you say it's done. Uh, we do run very hard to our Friday so that we get great pictures. And we are going to take pictures uh, so that she has pictures of herself working on it and just uh, nice pictures to, uh, to close the day. But she calls it when it's done. She's going to go home and continue with this adventure, hopefully with a few new tools and techniques. Uh, but I want to mention this because uh, this is important to me and I don't want to embarrass you. Uh, when Susie came in and did the werewolf, uh, she had experience sculpting. She came in, she came on so strong with the hair work and the anatomy of the werewolf. It's a wonderful thing to jump five months later or whatever it is. Um, she's been going out and she's been working. I know that she worked with Larry Bones, if you don't mind me mentioning. And as she comes back here, she's a different sculptor. And it's so interesting because I have this point of reference of her being here and doing this werewolf head. Now that she's gone out on some jobs, she's had uh, more experience um, as far as having a responsibility of delivering a sculpture, I can tell it in her person. She's much more relaxed and through the repetition of doing sculptures for other folks, uh, she was able to get her forms much faster than in the last class. I want everybody to know that my skill set flips every uh, three years it feels like and I get just a little bit better. And so this is part of the joy of sculpting. It's like a language. And the more you do it, the more you speak clay, the easier it is to speak. But uh, do you see that? It seems like this was so much easier it for did, you to realize. It did feel like I was moving a lot faster. Absolutely, and getting what you want mm -hmm. as far as uh, more, it's easier to get to the design as opposed to going in through the learning curve of the tools and what have you. So here we have a great example of an artist that has uh, gone on, done a bunch of work for other people, and come back. And uh, I, just a pleasure having you here. Uh, absolutely Happy wonderful. I should mention, uh, I'll mention this a little bit uh, later, but uh, I'm starting to have uh, so many students like Mike Caracappa, who's taken the class uh, four times. Uh, when getting information about the class, I'll talk about this in a few minutes, but I want you to know that we have a discount for returning students, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, so happy to have you back. When she's done, she'll mold it, paint it, and post it. Please check her websites and what have you, and follow her on all of her social networks. Um, Dynamite Sculptor. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Awesome. We're going to go to you, Chance. May I have the pen? You want to do it? Sure, that would be great. Thank you. Now we're going to go hang out with the Gormeister over here. Uh, speaking of returning students, Chance is also a returning student. Chance, I want you to go ahead, and we're here in monster lighting. Yes, uh, very simple. so dramatic. Go ahead and introduce yourself and give us all the information that you have so people can find you. Um, hi, my name is Chance Guijin. I'm 14 years old. I only have an Instagram so far, and that's just by chance, which is J-E-S-T underscore by chance, no caps, no spaces. Um, yeah, that's really the only connection I think you can get to me uh, social media-wise. But um, How old, Tell us your age again. Uh, 14. 14 years old. Tell us about your, your sculpture and your experience. Sure. Um, well, my experience here at the studio um, with wet clay, this is my second time using wet clay, and um, it's really an interesting clay to use while sculpting because it has all of these elements of being soft and also being hard at some time. So um, I really enjoy it. it is, my sculpture is uh, sort of a... Orkin-esque orc right, right, right. troll uh, creature, and I wanted to make it very gruesome, uh, very scary, uh, very outgoing. Show us what um, you were looking at. Uh, we want to hang out with oh, the yeah, sculpture, sure. but also you can go to the other side while she gets a beauty shot, mm -hmm. 
and then show us some of your drawings and some of your uh, inspiration. Okay. Well, um, as we have a as we have a drawing, or really an example of some bone structure that I was working on for the sculpture, that was one of my major struggles. But it was also a a uh, big release after I got it down and it, it felt really empowering and it, it motivated me more to make this creature uh, come to life. I was basing it off of uh, Lord of the Rings orcs, uh, the bone structure and the skin textures that are inside these sort of books. This is a Weta book that I was using for some inspiration on the Urukai uh, that was in the first film I believe and so this was um, really great, really really great creatures. Uh, very scary but very great. I uh, love Love going into detail with um, the wrinkle patterns going around the eyes and around the forehead. Had a lot of fun with this piece. A lot of fun. Um, originally, we had these little tiny eyes that were going in, and um, we found this excellent eye that I went over with some, uh, not lacquer, but um, oh, what do you call it? I don't know. The shiny stuff. Looks like glue. It's somewhere, somewhere in my head. Uh, Is it lip gloss? Uh, it no, not, not, not lip gloss. It's, um, let me look at it. I think I have the bottle right here. It is, uh, oh, it's a varnish, thank you. Varnish, um, and that I just went over with the eye again just to make it an extra shine. I uh, went in some places of the nose and the mouth and the teeth just to make it really shiny. And I made a huge decision to paint uh, this sculpture. Um, and I'd never done that before. And originally it was doing a little bit of painting on the teeth. And then I said, you know what? Um, I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna make these uh, giant uh, cuts and blood with this uh, creature. So went over it with a varnish, watered it down a little bit so it would bleed into the wrinkles, and uh, I'm really happy with it. I think it looks really gross, and uh, to me that's a compliment to myself, so mm -hmm. I really like it. Yeah. I, I Got some uh, great job, Chance. Keep it going. Oh. Scott Robinson. <laughs> oh, cool. Robert J. Sexton. Creepy. <laughs> <laughs> I got, um, I put this little cork earring in. I found this weird little piece of cork that I painted and put it around with this string and I didn't want to loop it through. I just wanted to put it around maybe as some sort of weird jewelry and um, yeah. yeah. Really enjoyed it. Oh, oh I want to Anthony, Anthony, hey, uh, asking what book is that with the bones that um, you were looking at for the, uh, this, the let's see, this is uh, Anatomy for the Artist by Sarah Simblet. Book. Photographer by John Davis. Yeah, very good book. Um, teaches you a lot. I think if I turn this around and not mess with any cords, you can see, see some of this some back, back stuff, some back scarring that I did. Yeah. Just Chance went for the paint on there, on there, which I think is yeah. great. <laughs> no problem with that. He's going to be able to go right ahead and mold it because he used a little bit of acrylic. And with this piece, it was a lot of storytelling that I had to, um, you know, put into the sculpture. But I, I hadn't done this much storytelling with anything, and uh, I had a lot of fun. This is really, really uh, beneficial for me as an artist to do this. Well, so, well, that's yeah. well and Chance has a great attitude. He's the kind of young man you want to work with. Nothing but good attitude and hard work, and really into the references and trying to push it, trying to find something new. And I gotta say, uh, you really came on with the wrinkles. Yeah. And like really that. got a good hold of that. Uh, as well as good forms. I, every time I get near this piece, I love the teeth. The mouth is just creepy, and the attitude on the side of the mouth, it just has a lot of angst in it. And I, I get a lot of Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. out of this. And uh, it's just a creepy character to be in the room with. You know, if he was, if you were in the room with this, it would, you, it would probably attack you. Yeah. You know, and kill you, and try to do some horrible thing. Chance and I were talking about painting maquettes on Pirates of the Caribbean. I had painted some of my maquettes for uh, uh, the mermaids, and just because nobody expected it, it kind of gave me a little leg up when, uh, when doing a, a bunch of maquettes. A lot of us were doing maquettes at that time. Um, if you feel it. And if it brings some originality to your sculpture, and if it's something in the moment that excites you, by all means, put some blood or some paint or some lip gloss, what have you, on the lips. Uh, anything to make your end user, your client, to draw them in and say, uh, experience this character, lose yourself into the character. Anything that does that is great. And of course, cork earrings and stuff, it just implies history. And uh, also, this is a minor thing, but I, was spilling so much blood for the first part of my life. 
uh, the fact that he's got blood here and he used a little bit of water to tickle the blood out and have it kind of spill down the front of the chest. Um, doing this kind of stuff is wonderful, wonderful. Not that he's such a gore hound, but there's a creativity in, uh, in creating gore. And uh, as we all know, there's a certain element of the sublime in the gore as well. Thus we have Sam Peckinpah and blood ballets and all this kind of stuff. There's a certain high theater in it, if you will. Um, good job, good job. Uh, Chance did a, a space alien last time that had a bubble. Yeah. Now he's done this orc type thing. We can't wait to see what you do. Um, and we were going to look forward to what you post in the future. Mm -hmm. Do you have any more sketches or anything you, are you thinking about? I think about? I have my sketchbook over there. This wasn't the original sketchbook. I just did this later today. I'm going to see if I can okay. get it really quick. Grab a sketchbook because I think he's got a few ideas that he's thinking about for a future sculpture. I and I have it on my phone, actually. Yeah? Well, yeah. Bring, it, bring it over if you want. Um, hmm. I really enjoy this sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. come on over. I don't know if you can even get in there. Oh, we'll see it. We'll see it. Well, just it's on my phone. Yeah. Um, totally. So this was kind of like a turtle creature, robot, yeah, alien so thing cool. that I wanted to do. It had two little eyes on the side and one eye in the in the middle of the head. Not a very good drawing, but I love the color, and I wanted to do something with that. It's um, kind of pop arty. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this was also kind of the same realm. Had this sort of weird um, robot lady person uh, and I'm really want to go crazy with some robotics and some technology in, in the future um, originally I was gonna do an uh, more of aquatic creature actually an angler fish man uh, and I was gonna use that but the way the drawing was coming out at the time uh, I didn't have too much time to get it down and uh, it wasn't right timing um, but um, I will probably do that in the future some sort of aquatic creature with robotics I really love this piece. So. Awesome. Yeah. So cool. I have, it came out almost when I was doing it. I had to put a lot of black paint in there as well. Because um, as I was doing it, I had this weird purple pink color coming out. And it almost looked like a like an orc fairy with all this <laughs> pink and gold glitter on it. And uh, yeah, it was really fun. Thank you, Beth. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Introduce your sister. <laughs> yeah. We want to welcome a new baby. This is my sister Hi. and little niece. Yeah. yeah little Lucy. <laughs> she Hi. loves being in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> she stole my hat, but I, I'm okay with it. <laughs> anyway, so happy to have you here and share the experience. You're a very talented sister and, and such a beautiful new baby. <laughs> We're going to come on here and we're going to close it up. Everybody just continue. Do your final moves. Keep on sculpting. I'm going to close it up and I'll be right back. Janelle, come on. Follow me. Go ahead and have a seat here. Huh? I'm going to sit right here. Everything's kind of messy here yeah. today, but we're going to just jump right in. Let me turn down my music here. Oh, what a week. What a week. Oh, my gosh. I just want to close this by thanking a few folks. Um, first of all, most important, thank you to the students of the November class. Uh, I had an amazing week with everybody. We threw a lot of clay this week. And I know I, I, you all know that I think this is very romantic, but I want you to know at the beginning of the week, we had a bunch of boring boxes of clay. And look what happened in 40 hours. So fantastic. Um, returning students, once more, I'm so lucky to have returning students uh, I'm very prideful about all of this. Uh, Mike Caracappa, as I mentioned, has been here four times. Uh, Susie's been here twice. Oasis New Yen has been here two times. And uh, uh, our uh, uh, Janelle Turley, who's filming right now, has been here twice. And uh, uh, if you ever take my class, and if you have ever taken my class, I've had the great fortune to teach in uh, China and in London and Belfast. And um, uh, if you've ever taken my class and you want to come out and take my LA class, I have a great uh, discount for you to thank you, uh, a handshake, thank you uh, for coming back and spending time with me. Uh, I get a lot of questions of, do I need to be uh, experienced in sculpting? No, uh, our mission statement here is to show you the real stuff. I stand right next to you and sculpt with you most of the time. And so uh, you don't need to have experience 
But once again, if you've taken my class in China, if you've taken my class in Aylesbury with uh, Neil Gordon, if you ever do travel out to Los Angeles and you come to my D3 studio, I have a nice uh, a thank you and discount if you'd like to take the class with me. Um, let me look over my notes here and see what else I have. Oh, I'm, oh I should mention this, Neil Gordon. Uh, I'm gonna be back in, uh, in Aylesbury uh, May 7th through the 11th, 2018, in the coming year. I was in Aylesbury with uh, Neil last year uh, in May, in the same period of time, right around the time of IMATS. And we had, um, it was, we thought we had, had planned a really good class and it turned out to be uh, so much better than we could have imagined. Uh, we had uh, 16 students and um, I know Neil has been posting a lot of their work, but uh, the, the class was amazing. This class does focus on prosthetics. It does focus on makeups. Even though we're doing a wed clay head, a lot of the techniques that I'm teaching, a lot of things that I'm doing, uh, can be translated into makeups. Same methods, uh, just slightly different medium, and sometimes a different kind of clay. But a lot of these techniques still apply to Chavant clay or monster clay, if that happens to be your choice. But I want to thank uh, Neil Gordon for bringing me out for this coming May uh, 7th through the 11th in 2018. We're also still working out the potential, a possibility. Uh, I want you to call Neil and ask him about this, but I think I might take part in another class uh, that features a, a longer class that he teaches. But I think I may come in for some days and do a little bit of the sculpturing aspect for that. Uh, speaking of classes, you guys know this is my great joy uh, teaching these kind of things. Um, I get so many uh, students that say to me, gosh, I wish before I had gone to this makeup school or uh, before I went to this uh, place and uh, uh, took a class or took a, an extended program, I wish I had come and taken your class so that I had gotten my feet wet with uh, these sculpture techniques. Uh, I've heard this over and over again and I want you to know I'm not sliding any of the makeup schools. They're wonderful. When I was a little boy, uh, we would take magnifying glasses and buy Fangoria and Starlog. We'd find pictures of Rick Baker, or, uh, Dick Smith, uh, and we would search these pictures for education and for knowledge. And that's the way we got it. The schools are wonderful because they do give you a chance to have a, a refreshment and a rehearsal before you go get a job. But I want you to come here first and have a little bit of intense uh, education as it pertains to sculpture so that when you do go to the makeup school and you do your final and you're walking down the hallway you don't think to yourself gosh my sculpture could have been better we want to give you a rehearsal and we want to give you confidence so that you're not questioning did I do the skin texture right or what have you uh, well I could go on about that but uh, we love the schools the point of these schools is to save you time and get you on the playing field faster um, here we go. Ah, I have a new class. <laughs> well, uh, coming up in December, uh, on December 4th through 8th, uh, I have a new Making Monsters class here at the D3 studio. Um, for information, I want you to call me at Don Lanning at sbcglobal.net. Once more, that's uh, Don Lanning at sbcglobal.net. Uh, that's a, a great way for me to be able to send you an email with all of the information, a class overview that covers uh, the tuition and everything of that nature. We keep our prices very reasonable. Um, our mission statement, once again, is to make you strong and to uh, give good education to the next generation of artists. I just hit my 20th year, and I know to a lot of you out there, uh, I'm a newbie in the business. A lot of you have been sculpting monsters and creatures for much longer than me, but uh, I'm at a stage of life where it's a real joy and a pleasure to have you come in and I'm able to share some of my experience, some of the things that I learned in these wild adventures. Sometimes I feel like a weird Lewis and Clark character, like I saw all these weird creatures and met all these weird people, went through all these scenarios, and now as, uh, as I'm growing older, I wanna share that with you and uh, give you a little preview of what's to come in your career. Nothing is more important than saying simply, art is the best. It's, it's the thing to talk about. It's the thing to do. I feel like in my personal life, when I'm sculpting, I'm doing something that has meaning. 
Uh, I'm not just spinning in the same rooms doing the same stuff. And so to be able to get together for a week like this is just fantastic. I want to thank Neil Gorton again for the opportunity to come out and see him. Uh, I want you to come to the IMATS 2018 in London and shake my hand. Doesn't matter if you're going to take a class, come out and see me. Uh, what a joy to walk around the IMATS. I want to thank AFA uh, Supplies in Burbank, California for supplying our heads. Um, gosh, you know what? Uh, really, it's just the students. I want to thank you for uh, looking in uh, on us and giving us this encouragement. I posted yesterday and we all looked at those uh, social media posts and we received great enthusiasm and uh, cheers on to keep sculpting. And I think that today was a stellar day for us and uh, it started with us looking at your input. So uh, I thank the students and I thank you, our audience out there. That went a little long. Look, here's Neil Gordon's ad. If you're in the UK, uh, especially if you're in Belfast, I want you to come out and I want you to hang out with us in Aylesbury. And then I want you to go with us to the IMATS. And uh, I'll see you there in May. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And once again, we'll see you for the December class. Um, for information, shoot me an email and I'll give you information on that. And that's just a short time away. Wow, this year has flown. It's crazy. Anyways, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.